Hey, let me remind you about what happened last time on The Incorrigible Party. With Erica vanquished and Chucky run down and killed, the party witnesses the summoning of the Infinity Vines. Their thick tendrils creeping up the safety shell, the ends splitting and spreading across its surface. Learning more about them from Alamar's books and a physical inspection atop the dome, the party concludes that stopping the vine's growth must occur at the summoning pools themselves. Devising a plan, Mia and Shaft use the Mirror of Metamorphosis to take on the guise of the Sea Hag and the Revenant. And now, let's see what mischief our adventures get into next. Mia and Shaft, you have an hour of this polymorph. Shaft looking like Erica and Mia looking like Sardo. So I will note that you, like when you captured Thunder's likeness, you polymorph into like the the image of what they're wearing, right? So like your clothes have morphed into like Erica in her raggy, her raggedy dress and Sardo in his leather armor uh, as well. And all of your equipment, of course, polymorphs with you. Shaft, do you want to wear this arm? You'll look more like Erica. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. And uh, so this this is just like a harness, right? That yeah. Goes over and is there? There is currently no other arm hanging there, right? That's correct. Or is there? There's not. So I'll put that harness on quickly, and then uh, I mean, I assume since I polymorphed into her, I have one less arm visible. Is that the way they would see me? Yeah, you are. You only have your right arm. Okay, so let's. I jump up on the uh, Pegasus and say, "Okay, we better get to this. There's not a lot of time." You guys stay here, we'll be back in hopefully 45 minutes. Be safe, Shaft. As Shaft and Mia are exchanging, you know, speaking, like, they, they sound like Erica and Sardo. Of course, their, of their, like, course. their vocal cords and stuff is also, you know, polymorph as part of the spell. So you're just, you're literally conversing with, <laughs> we, strangely, I would imagine, Erica and Sardo. And, and I hear myself as Erica, too, yeah, so it's, absolutely. it's really cool. <laughs> so I jump on and say, Come on, Sardos, let's go. I'm coming. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, so I, I assume I can I can hop on this Pegasus. It, it's uh, in the know here, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll just kind of hand wave some of that stuff. But it's like it's still you-ish. So okay. Mia and Shaft, you want to just get closer to the encampment as you are about 30 or 40 minutes away on foot in these mountains, right, from where you are from the camp. So you want to make the best of this hour you have. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll try to get as close as we can uh, before we get to where anybody can see us and sort of land over there in the hills and then head down um, with my uh, ability to move, you know, through regular speed through mountains. We ought to be able to hit it down there relatively quickly. Before you leave, what about the doppelgangers? How will we know it's you? I tell you what, why don't we mark ourselves in some way where they can't see us, see it? If they if they see us, they'll just get the mark themselves, right? Will we be marking ourselves or marking our, you know? I, I sort of pull my sleeve up and I take my dagger out and I cut a little cut, like an X on it, and I go, there you go. And I wipe it off. Do that. If we run into each other... X marks the spot? I don't care what shape you make, but that seems easy. <laughs> Alright, I will, I guess, on the right arm, mark an X on my bicep. And I will follow suit in the same location. Sardis, you up for it? Okay, I guess so. And I put an X on my arm. <laughs> Excellent. And, and Dreg, Dreg will do the same. Uh, better safe than sorry. What color is my blood? Is it rainbow? <laughs> Actually, you I'm just, I'm just no, you notice that you don't produce any blood. What? What? You're on As a revenant. Oh, yeah, because you're a revenant. Ah. Let's hope these markings stay. Shakara, Falzerin, and Dreg, what are the three of you going to do, be doing? I think we should get closer to the camp as well. 
In case they have need of us. Yes, perhaps we can get close enough that we can have a bit of a vantage and and if something loud were to happen, we might be able to be within earshot as well. Agreed. So would you like to be remaining up in the air? There's st- still a storm going, like we, oh, we yeah. could hide amongst the clouds. You were able to get over the encampment undetected up high, so you could potentially do a similar tactic, absolutely. I, I like the sound of that, because then we could have a better view of everything happening in the camp. What do you think, Falsey? Yeah, I like that idea. Great, and uh, Drago will, I guess, get on the Pegasus with Falsey then? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let's uh, take John and Elena on Mike and Emily and Falzer and can... Uh, <laughs> Emily, and Emily and Bill can get out of here. Is there a way to keep these Pegasus Pegasi like, tied up or like something so we can, you well, know? I think the last time we landed and they just took off and flew up and we just told them to come back to us, right? They when can come did. back? Okay, okay. I just don't want to... I love Peggy, number one and number two. So you're able to land uh, kind of, I, I mean, how do you, you want to approach via the road? or? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll sort of go up into yeah. the mountains, like where we drop the eye kind of thing, and, it was, and then just let the Pegasus eye fly up, and we'll head down the, the mountains like we're just returning. Like uh, anybody in the camp saw Erica leaving, they would see us coming back the way she had left. Yeah. Shaft, I feel like we should act a little injured and frazzled. We're not on our beasts, and Chucky is dead. Yeah, I think we won't. Uh, we won't get into all that. But I'm gonna be pissed off, Erica. Is what I'm gonna be, and tell them to stop it. Stop the the infinity vines. That something's gone terribly wrong. And I'll be handsome, charismatic Sardo. Yeah, okay. I don't know what that's going to do for us. <laughs> Trust me. You won't lose on this deal. Wink. <laughs> okay, I think we sort of hightail it, uh, and then we get, as we get closer to the camp, we start slowing down like we're returning from a, a battle of some kind. Okay. And yes, as you dismount, the, the Pegasi, they lift up off of the ground effortlessly, and they kind of join up high in the sky. Um, you know, they get up to where... Shakara and uh, Falzern and Drag are about, and you kind of lose sight of them again as they kind of filter in and out of the clouds as well. And as you uh, get to the edge of the encampment, you see that already nearly half of this huge stack of the barrels full of the black goo has been depleted. And people are still taking barrels and running them up towards the city and where the summoning pools are. So there's still all of this activity that you witness from your perch in the mountains, you know, as Erica and the, and the generals were leaving and, and following you, uh, it's still going on. So I'm going to, as soon as I get into the camp, I'm going to go, ah! Stop! Stop the barrels! Stop it all! Something's gone terribly wrong! And <laughs> the, the people, the cultists with the barrels, they Im- immediately drop the ones they're holding, and they just stand there, like in like stunned, but they follow your command. And I'll, I'll walk directly towards the the pits uh, with uh, Sardos in tow. This way, this way. Go to the go to the summoning pools. And yes, so the summoning pools are quite a ways. You know, literally on the other side of this encampment. So yes, you do walk, mm-hmm. uh, and it's not like it's like only a five minute walk, right? It's nearly yeah. a mile ish. So uh, still very short, but yes, you can, as you're striding. And I imagine you're just like st- continuing your barking of orders all exactly. the way through. Put those barrels down. Put them back. And uh, tell Sardis, Sardis, tell them to stop at the other summoning pool. Stop the ritual. And, and scream a few more times and throw things as I as I walk by. If there's if there's something in my way, I'll kick it and throw it. You heard the woman. Stop it right now. And you get about halfway to the pools, and you see. Uh, a figure approaching you, and it's Terry Russell, but I don't actually know that any of you saw Terry because you were in the tent when he was talking to Thunder, but you do recognize his voice. So, oh, 
what, what's going on here? Uh, Erica, uh, General Sardo. This has all gone terribly wrong. We need to stop, stop the Infinity uh, Vines immediately. This is no longer the plan. Uh, okay, I, I was worried when, when your mounts returned to camp without you. What, 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 what's happened? I have no time to tell you about these things. Until this is stopped, this is priority number one. Tell everyone, put the barrels back. Stop the infinity vine growth. Uh, okay, uh, so are, are we initiating the evacuation plan? Yes, yes! Most definitely. Oh, okay, and you see him and he turn and like to the nearest cultist and he grabs him and he says, we're, we're evacuating. And then that cultist goes to another guy and then that to another and it just starts to spread. And you see within minutes, like this message of evacuation is, is spreading out and Terry joins you again. Uh, what, what, what about, what about Kray Lakina? Uh, where, where's General Charles? It's being handled. Uh, Never you mind, Terry. Just do what I say. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, well, I, I did have two problems to report. Um, I guess stopping the vines uh, solved one, as they were kind of unstable as it was. Uh, but the other one is uh, we still haven't heard from Submersible 6 since we made landfall. I know you wanted to be kept abreast of that. Yes. And what of the others? Uh, well, I mean, they've all reported in like they're supposed to. And, and you see, kind of behind you, further around, uh, like, the middle of this cluster, right, you see, like, rockets and fireworks of, of, like, flares being sent up into the sky, you know, starting to illuminate the, the, the low-lying clouds in this red-orange light as they're being shot across the encampments down towards the docks. Uh, they, they need to be told we are retreating. Let them be told. I have other things I must do. And I'll turn and, and walk towards the camp. And I'll look back at Sar- Sardos! Come with me! Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, we all know the plan. And he turns to bustle off uh, with some of the other, other cultists. Oh, and and the, the creatures, the doppelgangers that I brought. Have you seen them? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, we've, I've heard that they have successfully got on to Submersible 3 and are on their way to the mainland. Good. And then I turn and, and, and with a huff, I walk back towards my tent. As I as we go there, do we see anybody else? Do we see Thunder? Do we see anybody else that uh, looks like they're in some uh, level of power or... Uh, no, everyone looks pretty nondescript. I mean, as far as cultists go. You, on your way to, like, you're just going to go beeline right for Erica's tent? I'm walking that way, and as, as I pass up cultist, I'll be saying, Take those barrels down to the docks immediately! Roll them quickly! Absolutely, and you see you heard her. more <laughs> cultists also begin to follow uh, your Erica's orders uh, as they seems like they've very quickly starting to disassemble. And people are running uh, the barrels that were kind of around the summoning pools. They've stopped pouring them in. They've picked them up and started moving them down south towards the port. Um, I'm, I'm specifically looking for somebody that might have some kind of, uh, like a, a magical, uh, some like a wizard or something that might have a higher level caster of some kind that might have some knowledge of how this, uh, how this works, how the summoning works, right? And if I don't, I don't see anybody like just regular cultists though. Yeah, no, like, I mean, you've witnessed some of this, like the power that some of the Kraken priests themselves could wield, uh, but they looked I mean, they were, again, clad in the same kind of black robes, they didn't uh, those ones that you tangled with down in the caves they didn't have any uh, distinguishable like markings on them, so you don't see anybody that stands out uh, just by, you know, glancing and like, taking in their physical appearance at all. Okay, so I want to get back to the tent so Sardos and I can talk uh, without being overheard. Okay, absolutely and yeah, I mean Everyone, just as you're walking through the activity, it's like you're parting a Red Sea. Like people, as you know, Erica's back. She's pissed very clearly. Yeah. We're getting the hell out of here. So they, they give you a wide berth as they 
continue to follow your orders. If anybody's standing idle, I'm going to go over and and, and and backhand them and say, The barrel's now! Absolutely, you do. And, and just, uh, <laughs> call it, I don't want everybody to stay the hell away from you me. You do and catch then... a few uh, lollygaggers and whip them into shape. <laughs> okay, so we get into the tent. Um, is there anything changed since we were there last? Uh, it doesn't appear been... so, no. Okay. So what do you think, Sardos? I say, and I wink. Uh, if we, the best thing that we can do is just get them the hell out of here. I don't think anybody's going to turn them around. The evacuation plan is handy. I'm worried about why our doppelgangers are going to the mainland. Yeah, I know. That I thought they'd be going into the city, so... What could they a, be doing? That's another problem. Ugh, I think we have them away from the city. They seem to be calling their ships submersible with a number. Yeah, I know. They got at least six of them. That's not good. Now the vines are unstable. That means they should take care of themselves. I would think so. If they're not getting fed anymore, they at least, it seemed like they were dying off as they were growing. Is there any way to trick these lowly cultists into sacrificing each other? Ah, oh, <laughs> that is a pretty cool plan. We could tell them that Kray Lakina demands it, and plans have changed. They need to, like, kill each other. I don't know. I just, I'm just spewing ideas here. That's, a, that's an interesting thought. Kray Lakina needs it. How many, uh, how many soldiers are in this camp again? Uh, a couple hundred. Kray Lakina needs at least another 150, 200 sacrifices. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good idea to throw them in the pit, though, right? No, we're not throwing them in, in the pit at all, no. I I don't know, it was just an idea I had. I don't know, what I would had. Thor think? They all seem really dumb. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, Thor despises uh, these cultists. That's a good point. Alright, um, how much time do I assess that we have remaining? Yeah, uh, not, what's our pocket watch Not say? very long. <laughs> Probably another 20 minutes. Okay. Now, if they um, see us leaving on Pegasi, I, oh. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Um, okay, so I think we have enough time to go back and find Terry Russell quickly and, and, then, uh, and then depart, or do we feel that we don't have that kind of time? From where you are in your tent, you definitely have the time to just beeline it right back for the mountains. I think if you wanted to find Terry and speak to him again, it would be cutting it pretty close. Now, Shaft, do you think they're evacuating via submersibles? Yeah, probably. They destroyed everything else. I, I, I just Where wanna, will they go? I just want to tell Terry to head back to the to the mainland and not to return. So, uh, I and mean, await if, our if, orders, right? If, if, I don't know what the evacuation plan was. The evacuation plan might be to just stay in the submersibles, and then they may put two and two together. Uh, I think we need to tell them to go to a location. You know, something like the Falaran Forest. That's right. far away. Pretty far away and await our orders, right? That will never come. That's right. How about uh, how about we do that? That does sound better than trying to get them to kill each other. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. I think that <laughs> might be As fun as that would be to witness. So, okay, so I go, we, we don't have a lot of time. Let's go. And I'll run out and I'll go... Get me Terry Russell now! And you heard the woman. Three cultists immediately react, and they each kind of run off uh, in the direction of the pools. And another two or three minutes pass, and Terry comes sp- uh, like sprinting up, huffing and puffing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what now? Okay, the evacuation plan is in order, but take all of the subs and take them to the Falarian Forest until I tell you otherwise. Uh, oh, oh yeah, we're, we're changing the rendezvous point then. Yes, yes. To the Falarian Forest. Most uh, definitely. Now, who is your most trusted messenger, Terry? Oh, well, I don't know. You could... you could. I usually eat lunch with Ike. Uh, he, he's not, not too bad a guy. Now, if Ike is dependable, we need him to track down the doppelgangers. Uh, okay, uh, where are they going? We need to tell them that plans have changed. Uh, sure, but where, where where do I send Ike? I mean, where did you send them? Send them to the rendezvous point in the Falaran Forest. No, no, but where did you send the doppelgangers? How will Ike find them? 
That is top secret information. I will get with Ike and tell him where to go. Uh, okay, well, well I, mean, I, I can go and find him. I'm sure he's just moving barrels. Yes, quickly. Quickly, gather Ike. Okay, okay, okay. Terry grabs a, f- a few other cultists and, like, uh, puts them on the task to find Ike. I look over at uh, Sardos and go, let's get the hell out of here. Agreed. Oh, yeah, okay, we can't wait for Ike. That's going to go all wrong. No, but we had to try to take care of these doppelgangers. No, it was a good plan until we didn't know where the hell they were going. Let's get out of here. At least delay their plans and confuse them, perhaps. So as we're talking, I'm walking uh, rather briskly and yelling at people as we go. Yeah, I'll follow. I will be at the dock soon! Yeah, and again, this activity is bustling. It seems like the collection of uh, unpoured barrels at the uh, summoning pools... Are, are you know the the piles they had stacked are quickly dwindling and reducing as people are moving them and you see a few cultists are herding uh, the nine cattle beepers that are left as uh, Terry did mention that the two that Erica and Sardo were on did make it back to camp um, having slayed Chucky's mount only the two did get back you see that they've started herding them back uh, as well trying to usher them back down to the port as well uh, all kind of the, some of the temporary tents some of them are being taken down. Uh, But you see that uh, many of them are thinking, well, you know what? We're just getting out of here. Like, leave them. What do we care if they're still up kind of thing? So I'm going to start, you know, running with with Sardos and go, "Eh, I just thought of a problem. If they get down there towards the docks and see Erica's body, we're (laughs) we're done. We were up in the hills. They will not stumble upon her. It's better safe than sorry. Uh, anyway, we're running back. I'm running back towards the. Where the I where was we got off. running. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull Emily and Bill back on mic and kick you two off. All right. All right. Good job, John. <laughs> Thanks. Shakara and Bill. <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? What's going on? I'm so out okay. of Emily and Faldron. <laughs> Shakara and Falzrin, atop your pegasi up in the clouds, you see the polymorphed Erica and Sardo get off of their pegasi on the ground at kind of the base of the mountain, still with a bit of cover, and their mounts kind of fly up and join you in the sky, and you see them walk into the camp, and from this point, I mean, they're you're fairly far away, but you can still distinctly make out their figures as they're moving in, and you see Erica flailing an arm around and Sardo seems to be pointing and, and barking. Can't quite, can't hear what they're saying from this height. Uh, as you see kind of a, 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 the cultists down there are, they've been just constant motion moving these barrels um, up towards the summoning pools. You see a cluster of them just immediately drop what they're carrying as Eric and Sardo seem to stroll right past them in, further, deeper into the encampment. As you are taking all of this in, you notice uh, at the base of the southern portion of the the strip of, of mountain range that would be on the western side of the path, so kind of the other side, the opposite uh, cluster of th- these uh, mountains that you had had the battle on, you actually see five figures seem to be moving into the mountains down there as well. What do these figures look like? Yeah, are they on mounts or? Three of them seem to be uh, in robes. Uh, two of them have uh, what look like weapons at their side, uh, a sword each, it seems. And they're kind of moving in and among the terrain as well. You're kind of, you know, briefly losing sight as they're moving through some of the the higher peaks of of the terrain there. But they seem to be making their way towards the encampment. Traveling by foot. Falzarin, do you see them over there? Yes, I do. Um, I don't know who that could be. Shall we go closer to see if we can tell? Yes, perhaps we can. We can go unnoticed, flying through the air on on our noble beasts. Mayhaps you and Drag stay up here, and I will go lower. Okay, as you wish. Okay, I will direct the Pegasus to. Not go all the way to the ground, but go closer so I can see who they are. As you swoop down, 
Uh, it still seems to be following your, your urges and your commands uh, just fine for the time being. And as you descend a few hundred feet, getting closer to these figures, you recognize only one of them as being Alamar. Getting closer, he's hunched over and he's still uh, holding his cane with the silver eagle head. And the other two uh, figures in robes, they seem to be quite young. Again, you don't recognize them. Or the other two that uh, look to be... They look... I mean, they're very distinctly not wizards, as they are carrying weapons. But uh, there is just the five of them, it seems. Okay, I will look up at Falzerin, and I will kind of uh, give the hand motion of come down here. And then I'll direct the Pegasus to land behind the group. And I will shout. Not shout. I will say loud enough for them to hear me, but nobody else. Halimar! As you motion to Falzerin, from the camp, you see these red and orange flares shoot up into the sky towards the port. And you'd like to land behind this group? Yes. Yeah, I, st- I will notice that, and then I'll still land. And Falzern, you're going to urge your Pegasi down? Yes. Yeah, I will I will pursue the, the location that Shikar is going to. And at your call, you see Alamar stops, and he turns, and the other four figures turn with him as he sees the two of you. And just like, as he lays eyes on Falzern, like a frown just takes up the lower half of his face. He regards you two for a second and motions for the other four to continue forward as he basically ignores you and turns to follow down the path that they're walking. Does he look lichified? No, no, he looks uh, similar to uh, the last time you saw him. He does, uh, actually all, all five of the, all five of them look a little beat up uh, some of them have uh, bruises and cuts and abrasions, as if they've gone through some type of trauma. Alamar, we have important information that you should know. Please. Roll a uh, persuasion check. Uh, so that is an eight. <laughs> With, Without even really turning around, he just kind of shouts over his shoulder I have no use for the two of you anymore Erica and Sardo and Chucky are all dead I know not who those people are what are you doing here I have come to take back my city Shaft and Mia are in the camp they are disguised They are trying to stop the vines. Then our objectives align. So it seems. And and now Drag gets off his, off the Pegasus too, and he he calls out, Alamar, please. It's it's been so long. Shakara and and Falzarin, they're helping too. Listen to what they have to say. Alamar, again, he stops at hearing Dreg's voice and turns around. Ah, old friend, I see your system is working as anticipated. Yes, uh, for now it's, it's holding, but something must be done about the vines. Please work with us. Alamar leans all his weight on his cane. The other figures are just, they seem to be Again, they're all like very. They seem very curious, and they're they're taking all this interaction in, uh, but they are just continuously following Alamar's lead. What do you propose? Do we trust this is Alamar? There are doppelgangers about. Prove it is you. And how would I do that to someone I barely know? I would ask if there was a, perhaps a small thing that is missing from your study. You see the frown on his face deepen. Yes, it was missing from my library. 
I did suspect you had a hand in that. It would seem this is the Alamar. Have you hurt Grimby? Grimby is alive. His ship is in worse shape than he is. Where is he? And Smoke he starts to curl. Points a gnarled finger kind of back behind you, back towards the shore. He is as a good captain would with his ship. I'm afraid it will not sail again, though. He is a just man, Almar. I, I hope you've had nothing to do in hurting him. He's simply been detained so I could get what was mine. Yes, that certainly sounds like your way of operating. What is it you plan to do here, Alamar? How are you intending to get rid of these vines? You are a man of infinite knowledge. Surely you have an idea. I have yet to survey the scene in full, but I'm sure I can think of something. You are quite full of yourself. I do not underestimate anyone's abilities, my own least of all. But now with Dreg's return, he and I can re-enter the city. And from there, reinforce and repel. Falzarin takes a bit of a sidelong glance to Dreg and raises an eyebrow. Sort of implying that I, I have the ring. And that I don't trust Alamar. He gets all of that just from a look. <laughs> Series of winks. <laughs> oh, goodness, not the brown eye again. <laughs> Would you, I mean, do you want to say something? Because I, I could, I could get, you could give me a check of some kind if you wanted to add a bit of vocality to, <laughs> to Yeah, that. I mean, perhaps I can sort of lean in and whisper to Dreg. And hope, hope that I can whisper to Dreg without Alamar hearing and say, Dreg, he, I believe he has all that he needs to carry out his plan to become a lich. We, we may need his help, but uh, he can't be trusted. I, I'm not sure that he has Heraklion's best interests at heart. At least not what you or I would want to see come of Heraklion. And, and, and Dreg leans back into and of course, this is very clearly visible, but not audible from Alamar and his group. What is the greater threat here? Do we, can we do this by ourselves? I hate to admit it, but I, th I think we need his help, even if he may be a threat tomorrow or the next day. Then I should take him into the city. What can you do from inside the city that you cannot do outside? I... I... I do not know. Nothing. I can do nothing. Alamar, why do you need entrance to the city? Why can you not help us from out here? Done with your whispers, then. Mayhaps. The city... Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The city itself, it's full of many powerful people. Perhaps all they require is proper leadership, in which I have been giving to the city for many centuries. Do you know how to stop Infinity Vines? I know that in time they will stop themselves, but it does not seem like time is what Heraklion has. What do you mean they'll stop themselves in time? They're going to crush this dome if left unchecked. My point exactly. Tell me, have you been in the city recently? What of the other elders? What is happening inside? To the best of our knowledge, they... well... Most of the elders are dead. Geneva betrayed us all. She was a deep scion and eliminated every threat inside the city. His facial expression, it seems to soften 
a little. Uh, as he and then he recomposes himself. She I perhaps was too foolish in any trust that I put in her. She betrayed us all. She fooled us all. The last we were in the city, it was being held together by these two groups of of casters who are maintaining this fear. Uh, apart from that, there is little to no leadership within the walls. All the more reason to hasten the re-entry into the city. Those are, and he eyes up the Pegasi, quite the beasts you have come across. Surely they can take some of us. You would not get through the camp on foot. And I will lead the Pegasus over to him to see what it does. Uh, as you, uh, as it approaches Alamar, Alamar doesn't stir as you move towards him. He doesn't reach out for the animal at all. Still has all his weight lean on his cane, uh, supporting himself. The the Pegasus it kind of gives a you know a, a breathy neigh, a snort as it approaches Alamar, but kind of similar to your first interaction with it. It doesn't seem to have any negative uh, reaction to approaching Alamar. Okay. If the Pegasus will allow, I believe it would be much easier for you to fly to the entrance point. Yes, I agree. And I'll look back at Falzarin. I have a very concerned look on my face. (laughs) <laughs> the idea of letting Alamar onto this noble beast just really worries Falzern. But I I reluctantly nod my head. We need a plan. Once you are within the city, what do you intend to do? I intend to take it back. Only the shell can s- prevent the vines from entering. Perhaps we can reinforce, and he looks over to Dreg, who Dreg gives a, a slight nod, and then go on the offensive. I believe I will better serve outside the dome, and aiding Shaft and Mia with taking down the vines from here. Falzarin? Yes, I agree. I think my place is outside of the dome as well. I I can take Alamar. What of the rest of them? You see the, the younger uh, wizards they look they look very frightened. <laughs> uh, whereas the other two in the armor look a little more hardened, uh, kind of very stoic. They've yet to give much of a reaction other than the curiosity of this exchange is it really means a lot of it means nothing to them so far Alamar kind of waves a gnarled hand at the the two young wizards they should be priority getting to safety so I did not care for them since the attack to have them perish outside of the walls so they will go with you but how How will they get there? They will need both Pegasus. Can they, would they all be able to be transported? Uh, Well, if it's Alamar, the two of them, and Dreg, you could definitely put two two per Pegasus. They can hold them. And, uh, I mean, Shaft and Mia's Pegasi are still close by, but they didn't land, right? As they, again, they like to be in the air. They're still up there. Those two could come with us. They could be useful. Yes, that that works for me. All right. So I walk over to my Pegasus and pat it on the neck, look it in the eye, and kind of sigh, and then lead it over towards Alamar with a bit of a scowl on my face <laughs> and warning in my eyes. <laughs> Falsy has has come to respect these 
noble beast. Yeah, in just the the short couple hours that they have been with you. <laughs> but uh, to, to your credit, it does seem like they have also grown an affinity for their riders. One of the young apprentice, uh, the younger wizards, they kind of take an Al- Al- one of Alamar's arms and they help him get up on to the Pegasus. And that same like almost involuntary reaction from the Pegasus. It, it rears up much like it did when Shakara climbed. Oh boy, Alamar. <laughs> and break all the bones in his body. And it bucks Alamar right off. Like, oh no. He didn't even get his hand on the reins. <laughs> As he, and it kind of like falls into like the, the young wizard helping him and they both kind of fall to the ground. Alamar's cane goes uh, scattering away from him and out from a a deep pocket of his robe clatters a small vial filled with a greenish black liquid very immediately recognizable to Shakara and Falzerin as the elixir can I grab it real quick you can absolutely attempt to yeah Yeah. what kind of role you want for initiative Uh, go ahead well I mean you know, if you're not being subtle at all about grabbing it, then you can go ahead and grab it. You can just okay, yeah. get to it. I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to hold it and look at it and look at him. It would seem that your shine is a bit tarnished. And I'll make a big show of sticking this bottle in my pack. Uh, the the young wizard hurriedly grabs Alamar's cane and helps him to his feet as Alamar. Very, uh, you know, that, that frown turning into a scowl. I would recommend handing that back to me. I found it once. I will retrieve it a second time. You know exactly where it is. I know exactly where it is. Let's leave it at that for now. It may be Heracleon's only option. Do you really feel that way? The safety and longevity of the city is my only goal. Do you feel that that goal will not change with a transformation completed? She's right, Alamar. We don't know where your allegiances will lie if you go through with this. I know that you have an allegiance to Heracleon and feel responsibility, but... Now. You cannot trust what you will turn into. Agreed. And Dreg, on your side, pleads with Alamar. Please, friend, this this is madness. This road, you, you do not know where it leads. You can't possibly control it. You, you could lose everything you hold so dear. Alamar, still that scowl on his face, seeming to be just so stubborn, shakes his head. No, I have worked. I have learned. I have gathered the necessary knowledge. I have made deals so foul with those even fouler to get to this point. It is what is necessary. Necessary for whom? Certainly not the city. The city does not need you to do this. It is all for the city. For now. Give me. This will change you. My vial. You cannot undo this. It does not need to be undone. I believe you will regret this. I believe we will regret this. Hand it to me. I'll look at Falzerin. I'll look at Dreg. Falzerin shakes his head. Dreg also shakes his head. This is folly, Alamar. Surely you know what is entailed with this. What what, what has clouded your vision? We, we may not have seen eye to eye for the majority of the time we've known each other, but you will be turned into something purely evil if you do this. How can you run a city in that state? 
I will be turned into something powerful. Powerful and enough evil. to retain the city. You will not desire to. All of your wishes and wants will change. You will only care about yourself. You, you will no longer care nothing. for the city. The city is me. This is all I have. But you are not all the city has. You will consume and destroy this city if you do this, Alamar. You have one more chance. The vial is made out of... It's, it's just a glass vial. Give me the elixir. What out of my pack? And he reaches one gnarled hand out towards you. Throw it on the ground. And the elixir smashes on the rock. The rain quickly diluting its contents as it just pours across the rock in this storm. And you've never seen Alamar in this state of rage as we can roll initiative. And that's our show. Be sure to follow us on social media, Incorrigible Par on Twitter, Incorrigible Party on Facebook and Instagram. You can visit IncorrigibleParty.com for additional world and NPC information and to get all your Incorrigible Party merchandise. Merchandising. That's where the real money is made. Get a flamethrower. The kids love that one. The Incorrigible Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. For your design needs, visit CriticalHitDesign.com. That's me. All ambient sounds and music during the episode are courtesy of TabletopAudio.com. And our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can contact him for your own musical inquiries via email at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring!